Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode 45 of Lightroom Quick Tips. In this episode, I'm going to show you how you could kind of blend two images together in Lightroom. Now, recently I did a Photoshop Quick Tips video, episode 4, where I demonstrated how to blend two images together. I received a lot of questions from folks asking me if you could do that in Lightroom. And really the answer is no. You cannot do what I did in that Photoshop video in Lightroom because you, it requires layers. And you cannot use layers in Lightroom. Layers are not available. Well, you can do something similar. Now our resultant image is going to look totally different than what it did in that Photoshop video. But it's a pretty cool technique and I think it's worth learning. Now, I must say I got at least part of this technique from Scott Kelby, so credit where credit is due. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the same two images that I used in that Photoshop video. The first one is the image of this bride and groom on the beach, and the second image is the image of the wedding bands. I want the wedding bands to be like the bottom layer, and I want the bride and groom on top of the um, of the wedding bands. Now what we're going to do is process your images as you normally would in Lightroom in the develop module. Now these last few steps I'm going to be doing in the develop module are personal to me. It's the way I want my resultant image to look. I want my resultant image to look very light and ethereal uh, in feel. Now you might not want that so you have to process your images accordingly for the feel that you want to um, you know, have for your final image. Now again, um, this bride and groom are going to be on top of the rings and they're both in a landscape orientation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to crop the bride and groom into more of a vertical orientation and I'm not worried about aspect ratios here so I could do an uh, irregular crop and to do that make sure that the padlock is unlocked and we're just going to pull in the sides and I think I'll pull down the top a little bit here. Maybe center them a little better. That's good. All right, now they're cropped into a vertical. Now, um, again, keeping that idea that I want this light ethereal feel, I'm going to go to Effects and I'm going to give it a white vignette. And I'm going to heavily feather it. Okay, so this image is done. Now we're going to go over to the rings. And again, I want this to kind of have a light feel to it. So I want to kind of wash it out in white. And to do that, I'm going to go to the tone curve and I'm going to go to the bottom left hand corner of the curve. I'm going to hold the shift key in when I do this and I'm just going to drag it up and you can see how it gives it this white cast uh, to the uh, image. And I'm just going to maybe right about there. Okay, so these two images are done. Now, to blend them together, we're going to use the print module. And this is really Cool, there's a lot of things you could do in the print module that a lot of people don't realize. Now, first of all, to do these two images, we need a, like a custom layout. So go over here to the right hand uh, panel and where it says layout style, make sure that you're on custom package. Then what you want to do is you want to go to page setup over here and you want to make sure that you're using a paper size and I'm using finger air quotes I know you can't see me when I say paper size because we don't necessarily have to print this we could save this as a JPEG when we're done so we don't have to print this but we do have to tell the print module what is our palette going to be how big is it going to be now I'm choosing 8 by 12 because the rings are a 2 to 3 aspect ratio and they'll fit perfectly on this 8 by 12 size all right, so that's why I'm choosing that. That is a custom size, and to do that, you would just click that little um, uh, drop-down menu here, and you go to Manage Custom Sizes, and you can see I have two custom sizes. I have 13 by 19 and 8 by 12. So we're going to use that 8 by 12, all right? So we have the 8 by 12. We're going to click OK, and there's our workspace. Now what we're going to do now is we're just going to simply drag both images on to our workspace here. We're going to make sure that the rings are selected by clicking on it. And then we're going to go down here where it says cells and we're just going to make it bigger. Okay, so it fits perfectly right on there. So now we have our bride and groom. We're going to click on that so that's active. And we could drag any of these handles out that we want and we could make them maybe a little bigger. Oops. Maybe that's too big. We come back and readjust this. Okay, 
So now we have the bride and groom on top of the rings. Now I want to put the date that they were married up here, all right? So we're going to go down here to the identity plate. And we're going to activate that by clicking this little checkbox. Now you can see the identi identity plate has my name. We don't want that, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to edit right here, edit. I clicked, if, I, if you didn't see, there's a little downward facing arrow right here. I click there. Let me do it again. I click that and then I go down to edit. Okay, and I have my name here. So we don't want my name. We want the date. Let's say it's um, July 21st, 2015. Okay, and we want a different font also. And let's go up to um, Lucinda handwriting. Okay. That's good. We're going to click OK. So we have the date there. I want to override the color. So I'm going to click there. And I want to make it bigger. So I'm just going to drag it out and drag it in and around. And if you see now, I'm, I've got 12 inches here by this ruler. And this little handle is right in the middle. So if I want to center this horizontally, right about there would be centered horizontally. So um, to see now how, you know, we have all these, um, like, labels and things on here. And if we want to do that right here where it says Show Guides, click that off. And you can see there's our image right there. And, you know, now we could come back in and readjust things. If you want to make this bigger or smaller, you could just click on it. Uh, you want to do anything like that. But I think that's... Not bad, right there. Now I said you, it's different than the Photoshop version. The Photoshop version, when you have the advantage of working with layers in blending modes, you could really do a lot more with it. But there is, you know, this is I think pretty nice. I think this looks pretty good. You might want to um, change the vignette on this image. Maybe it's a little too strong. Maybe you want to make the uh, white a little stronger on the rings so maybe it will blend a little better or look a little better and then when you're all done what you would do is you print to right now it says printer well you're going to print it to a JPEG file like that and then you could print it right to a JPEG file and there you have it and that's how you would do this kind of blending technique in Lightroom I hope that helps. I hope that answered a lot of questions about how you could do something like this in Lightroom. I'd like to thank everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. Thank you very much. I will talk to you guys soon.